We're going to flick around the Bible in two places. Is that okay? Yeah. We're going to go Old Testament, <coughs> New Testament. Let's just... Uh, Lord, I want to pray, Lord, that each of us will hear you as I speak. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. So then God said, let us make human beings in our image to be like us. They will reign over the fish in the sea, the birds in the sky, the livestock, all the wild animals on the earth, and the small animals that scurry along the ground. So God created human beings in his own image. In the image of God, he created them. Male and female, he created them. Then God blessed them and said, be fruitful and multiply. Fill the earth and govern it. Reign over the fish in the sea, the birds in the sky, and all the animals that scurry along the ground. Well known to us all? Really unpacked it fully? Because I really like this passage. It's taken me a long time as a Christian to actually understand that this being made in the image of God is about being an estate agent. <laughs> a, there's nothing wrong with estate agents. Well, certain ones. I used to be one. He's up. But just think about it for a minute. What do estate agents do? Now you've got all that to one side. If you were selling a property and you cannot physically be present at any of the viewings, you hand the keys of your property to the estate agent. That's right. <coughs> and you give them the authority to show potential purchasers around your beautiful and gorgeous home that you have longingly thought about, masterfully decorated into the livable, inviting dream home that it is. No? Yes. <laughs> And what do you expect the estate agent to do? You expect them to show off every room, do you not? Yeah. The garden, which is your Eden. And sell the attributes of your property. For them to point out the practicality and goodness of all that this property has to offer. Yeah? And if you're away for a long time, you'd also point out that the estate agent must keep the place tidy. Care for the garden. Vacuum the place, dust, feed the cat, and generally govern your property for you. And that does happen. Happened in my day, way back in the late 80s. So easy to sell property then. Until the slump happened. But that's what you would expect your estate agent to do. To care for your property if you're away for a long time. You'd expect them to do the same amazing role that you would do if you were there. Yeah? Yeah. How is this any different from what we're called to do by the owner of this property, commonly known as creation? And the owner of this commonly known as creation property is called the Lord. We're his estate agents. So remember those estate agents you talked about that lied, steal with your money? You're them. We're his representatives. We're called to govern his creation. We are called to take care of it and to show it off to people who don't know him yet. And don't realise it's his property. We're called to be fruitful and multiply, are we not? Because he's left us in charge with all his authority. And by the way, fruitful and multiplying New, Test New Testament terms is not just about making children. It's also about making children of God <coughs> to multiply more estate agents. Think I've gone slightly nuts? <laughs> I went nuts years ago. Let's look at what the Lord says. 
after he had left, after he manifestly revisited us in his home. Jesus came and told his disciples, I've been given all authority in heaven and on earth. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Teach these new disciples to obey all the commands I have given you. And be sure of this, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. I'll repeat that again. Jesus came and told his disciples, I have been given all authority in heaven and on earth. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations. Notice the phrase that Jesus used. Came and told the disciples. Didn't ask, told. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations. Baptise them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Teach these new disciples to obey all the commands I have given you. And be sure of this, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. And the state agent. The state agent doesn't take it personally if a personal, sorry, if a potential purchaser rejects the home that is being offered. An estate agent does not take it personally if when they're showing you around the home and you go, I don't like that, I don't take it personally. The estate agent role is to proclaim the good news of the home, normally by advertising it or word of mouth, and then to meet with the potential purchaser and present the facts in a clear and concise manner. Actually, any decent estate agent is able better to sell the home because they've spent time with the owner themselves. They've learnt about the property directly from the owner. They have learnt, engaged in conversation with the owner, about why such and such part of the property has been done like that. You ever thought about the fact that sometimes if you're showing somebody around your home, they go, oh, I like the way you've done that arch. And you all go into why you did it like that. And the problems behind it. <coughs> I'm sorry, does other people do DIY here, or is it just us? No? Okay. <laughs> Currently, we're in the process of DIY. Sorry, let's rephrase that. Currently, Joy's in the process of DIY because she's doing all the work, not me. She was plastering yesterday. No, I'm not offering out her services. <laughs> I'm very proud of my wife that she can plaster. I do the destruction, she does the making. So, you would do that. So, actually, as an estate agent, when I used to talk to sometimes some of the owners of properties or listen to them, you needed to understand why they loved their home so much. Why they cared for it in the way that they did. You know, if you've recently bought property, you spend your time changing it into your look, don't you? And how you like it to be, don't you, Josh? Yeah, that's what I'm <laughs> But you learn from the owner. You engage in conversation with the owner about why this property looks like it does. What was the reasoning behind it? You check out the small details. Really, you should really go through the seller's pack. They have seller's packs now, don't they? You go through in detail the seller's pack with the owner, or as we would commonly call it, the Bible. This is the Lord's seller's pack. If you don't know it, you can't know what your CO emissions are from your house. You need to read this. A estate agent would have their own personal understanding of the home because they have open communication with the owner themselves. And as they sell the property, knowing that they have the authority to represent the owner, and that authority is even more recognised because of their relationship <laughs> with the owner. If you're in constant communication with the owner of a property, you know exactly what they're thinking, you know how they would like the property to go, you would know where they would like to negotiate and who they would like you to sell it to. How's that any different from communication with our Lord? And if a person kicks off an estate agent, telling them that this is an awful home, and this does not, as far as they're concerned, meet their needs, normally because they cannot see beyond their own nose, they can't see the potential benefits, the estate agent's view is, well, 
I'll move on to the next potential purchaser and see if they're interested. You don't want to purchase this home that could be so beautiful for you? Your loss. They do not take it personally because they're not the owners but the representatives. It's the owner who built the house and decorated it, not the estate agent. It is the Lord who built and decorated creation, not us. Do you know what our problem is, brothers and sisters? We try to redecorate what God's already made. That's why sin came about. We try to make it more in our image than in God's. <coughs> and another role of the estate agent is to negotiate on behalf of the owner. Isn't that good? And then this is the best bit. If someone does purchase the home... You shake their hands as the estate agent, and the estate agent should really introduce you to the owner eventually. Bit of communication, bit of honesty, quite helpful. Then the estate agent will continue, or should, to guide you through the purchase of the property. Estate agents aren't all about just taking the money. They sometimes take care in the person who's purchasing the property, explaining everything, explaining the next steps in how to and what it means to purchase this property. The role of the estate agent is to give the initial, shall we say, <coughs> discipleship. <coughs> we brothers and sisters are the estate agents. By being made in the image of the Lord, we are his representatives. We are given all authority to advertise, proclaim and show the potential followers of Jesus his glorious, beautiful and fit for purpose home. It is our responsibility not just to shake the hands, but to also disciple the new purchaser of coming to know Jesus. We call this kingdom of God with a price set at the enormous cost of the cross of Jesus on the cross, yes? Our role is not to take the keys from the owner and lock ourselves in the home. We should be out there advertising and discipling new people to live in this home with us. And we do this not to earn our commission... We don't get commissioned as followers of Jesus, do we? But we do this to recognise there are far too many people wandering aimlessly without their true home. And if we do not offer them the shelter of Jesus Christ, they will die of exposure. How about you? But Joy and I are really looking forward to showing off our new hallway. Really looking forward to showing off the new hallway. Uh, some of you pop round to drop off the linen if you had a good old poke, uh, which uh, some did. You could see that it's in a right two and eight at the moment. Oh, sorry, a state. It's in a right state. But we're really looking forward to showing it off because we know everything about it afterwards. We know when we put out that wallpaper, we know what we've hidden behind the scenes. <laughs> But, you know, I'm fascinated about everything about it. I can't wait to show it off. Are you the same or is it just me? Love showing it all off. Love sort of telling people, this is what we've done. Yeah? Oh, you should come and see this new brick wallpaper we've... I might mention that. We're going to have brick wallpaper. What? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, white. Right. Don't, excuse me, do you want me to come round to your house and stop judging yours? <laughs> so, it's going to look a bit 3D, it's going to look rad, you know what I mean? And, and we're looking forward to it. We're going to go to town on it, quite frankly, and if anybody comes around with a spray can and starts graffitiing, we're going to have work. Right? <laughs> so, but we can't wait to sort of show it off. And we radically changed it. We used to have this arch that led from the... the, 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 the from the hallway into the kitchen. I have to admit, I've never been a particular fan of the arch. All right? But it was my father-in-law already built it, and that's what it was there for. Well, uh, conveniently or inconveniently, it's up to you how you want it. But as, as Joy was... By the way, Joy's doing all the work. I don't know why I'm saying I'm doing anything. I'm not doing anything at all. But when Joy was steaming off the wallpaper, it, it sort of steamed off the, the arch cutout that he'd done. What? 
what a shame. So, um, <laughs> so uh, come. And it looked radically different. And we can't wait. So some people, friends, have come round. We've gone. Look. Not really pleased. It's pathetic, isn't it? Isn't it so? But look, I don't have to sort of feel like I've got a duck anymore. <laughs> Show it off. <coughs> Why? Because I'm proud of my home. Proud of the home that God gave us. And I know everything about it. And I want to show it. Did you know that when we did this, we had to stick this bit of wood over there with a bit of no nails, and it's covering up this whooping great hole behind it, but you wouldn't know. And I really want to show it off. And why? Because I know the house intimately, much more intimately sometimes than I'd like to know the house. We should be doing the same. When we know our Lord, we want to show him off, don't we? We want to show him off in what he has done in our lives. Earlier on, people giving testimonies, fantastic testimonies. Here, showing off what the Lord has done. But we also need to do that in real church. Real church, by the way, is out there. We need to show off what our Lord has done. We need to be telling people. And the Lord has given us the authority, the victory, the grace to do it. Because he says, you are my representatives. That's what it means to be made in the image of God, by the way. We're actually his ambassadors, his representatives. Yes, his estate agents. You're an estate agent, right? You want him to tell all the best bits, don't you? You want him to take pictures, don't you? And say, avoid that corner over there, it's a bit messy. Take all the best bits and show it off to everybody. We should be the same with our Father in Heaven. We want to tell them what Jesus has done for us. Not just sing about the fact he's given us victory, but the fact that tell people what that victory looks like and how they can have that victory as well. And be released. And it's not just about telling them moving on. When I talked about discipleship, it's our role, brothers and sisters, to make Disciples, it says in the Bible. And that's walking alongside people, telling them about Jesus, teaching them, unpacking the Bible. <coughs> that is our role. And it's not a gentle will you mind doing it. It's actually a command from the Lord. Go and make. Am I laying it on a bit thick? No, I'm not. I'm only the Lord's estate agent this morning. He's laying it on thick. I unashamedly tell you that at the end of September, we all have the opportunity to go and be estate agents in Greenford. Forget Aaron James, forget Hart, forget all of them. If you don't know, they're the estate agents that are in. I think there's another one, but I can't remember their name. It really is important. At the end of September, we all have the opportunity to have open communication with our Lord, so we know how much he loves us. Then to go out for an hour, selling off this fantastic property known as creation, and Jesus' death and resurrection on the cross. We also have the opportunity to come back afterwards and tell each other how amazing it was, and to soak in his presence again. Does that sound pretty cool? And I know some of us are going to say, but that's not my thing. I, I, I don't go out on the streets. I'm not Steve, or I'm not you, Pastor Warren. Would you like to know something about Pastor Warren? I was thinking about this this morning. I think it's assumed somehow I love being out there proclaiming the gospel. I think it's presumed <coughs> that I'm really confident in doing it. I think it's presumed that I really, really don't mind going, Hello, I'm here! Let me tell you about Jesus. Do you know something? A chunk of the time, I'm out there and I am scared witless. I don't go out there with a sense of, 
Yeah, check me out, folks. Collar, check me, I'm a Christian. <laughs> going in the pub, going to tell you about Jesus. Going in with a... No, I don't. Half the time, I'm going there going, Lord, you're going to make, put people in front of my path and I haven't got a clue what I'm going to say to them. I'm actually scared that I haven't got the right words. I'm scared I'm going to look like a right idiot in front of them right now. Do you know something? The Lord has never let me down yet. And he never let you down, neither. I'm oh, sorry, the, the amens were slightly less at that point. <laughs> he will never let you down, neither. Yeah. And that's the thing. What I realise, it takes time to realise, don't take it personal if somebody doesn't like what you're saying to them. But what's been going on, and I've reason this September, it's called the turning. I've mentioned it enough. This is about the turning. And what has been learned in the turning is that God has already gone ahead. Wasn't it Debbie that told go to our own children? God's already gone ahead. And people are responding to the gospel really positively. What I've discovered over the months and years I've been doing this now, is that actually God's gone ahead. So we don't have to worry. And if somebody's not happy, all they're going to say is, well, you're a, I don't know, don't come to me, you Jesus freak, or you're Bible bashing, whatever. Yeah, then? And we shouldn't take it personally. I don't know if anyone really noticed this week. Do you remember a couple of weeks ago I talked about we're meant to be weirdos for Jesus? Who remembers that? You called us weirdos? You don't remember that? It was the best line ever. I would have it. Right? Called weirdos. Guess what? In this week's Bible reading they were talking about you're meant to be weird for Jesus. <laughs> basically ahead of word line. But the point being is that we have got an opportunity to take time off work. By the way, this is time off work. A week off. Now we used to do that as a church here many years ago. <coughs> way, way back, I remember before I went into ministry, we would take two weeks off work, we'd have a mission team coming over from America. Who remembers that? Yeah. Come on, stick your hands, come on, you've been here long enough. Yeah? They would come over, we'd take time as a church, we'd take time off work and we would go out on the streets and go knocking on doors. What was it like? Hard, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. Bit tough. Nerve wracking. I didn't used to enjoy, I used to hate it. And then I literally went with the Amer one of the American pastor's wives. Um, and she said, I hate, I was so quiet, I would never do this, she said. But I realised God loved me and he, other people need to know about it. Mm. And she was full on. I just sat back going, great, I haven't got to do anything, I'm quiet. <laughs> and then after about ten hours, she said, Warren, do you want to knock on the door? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Eva. No, I don't want to knock on the door. Right. <laughs> so, so Eva just went, whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> so, um, so I, I just thought, I, I realised this morning, I was having a shower, actually people don't know. You think I'm full of this. I'm not. I go out knowing that the Lord's gone before me, and there are too many dead people walking on the high street in Greenford. And we're the ones with the great advertisement of life that they have. So I'd like you to consider... Commencing uh, the weekend of the 22nd of September, think about sacrificing some of your holiday to come out with all of us for a week. And it literally is an hour each day, by the way. The rest of it is soaking in the morning, soaking in the evening. So if you want to take half day, that's fine. But consider doing that. And I really shoehorn that in unashamedly. Because it is time, my brothers and sisters, that we're out of. We're not going to be on our own. There are other churches involved. Greenford Methodist Church, uh, Dominion uh, Chapel are involved as well, which is an independent foster care church by Pastor Olu, who's cool. Um, and we're all going to be doing it together. And it's, it's a London wide thing. But we're God's estate agents. Who else is going to know about the property known as Jesus Christ unless we sell him? We're his mouthpiece, we're his representatives. Amen? Amen. We do hope you've enjoyed and benefited from this presentation. To learn more about what the Bible teaches us and how to apply this to our everyday lives, check out our biblical teaching videos at gbcweb.tv.